Welcome to this week's Two Guys and Some Horror. Uh, this week, you know, we're talking about another Canadian film, because that's what we do now every week. Every week. Either Clark picks a Canadian film, or I pick a Canadian film, or I unexpectedly pick a Canadian film. I don't know what we're going to do, Clark. I think all horror movies come from Canada. What do you think? What are you talking about, man? We're talking about Yoga Hosers from 2016. <laughs> oh, that's a it's, movie, right? It's, a, it's another Canadian film. Um, Terrible. What did you just say? Goddamn Yoga Hoser. All right. Um, I, so, won't, I won't deny that this was a great movie. It, it was great, but it was also just Kevin Smith doing his thing. Of course. Um, and we'll get to that. I, I've got some info for you on that because you chatted me last night. Uh, I was watching it. I believe you were watching it also last night. Um, I think we were only about five minutes off, surprisingly, and we didn't even tell each other we were watching it. So I feel like we're starting to hit our fusion point. So how are you doing, buddy, this week? How's everything I'm, going? I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. I got an Amazon as opposed to last week when I didn't have my Amazon package. Now there's one right in front of me. Well, that's good. Um, yeah. Sounds like they figured this shit out. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe they didn't. Maybe it's the same <laughs> day we're recording this that last episode, and this is another package. Damn it, Clark. Let the people at home think Amazon... Isn't messing up <laughs> and let them, every let single them trust day. in these multi trillion dollar corporations. Oh uh, man. What well, a beautiful every, day. Everything is going great over here at the Miller Casa. Uh you know, work's going all right, working from home. Uh wife and kid are doing okay. Wife is getting closer and closer to uh her due date for little Bubby. So uh, you know, we're just doing what we can over here to stay Cold because it's getting freaking hot, dude, already in Arizona. It is oh, getting no. hot. Let me tell you, sir. When I was a young lad, no, I got nothing. It is getting hot. <laughs> when I uh, was a young warthog. Don't make me sing. I will. Um, no. All right. So I don't think we have a Clark's Quick Review this week, do we? I, fuck no, man. This is just Kevin Smith jamming his shit into something and that's going to be the theme of this episode so just i think this, this is a great happened. segue i think it's a great segue because i want to hear a little bit more about your beef with kevin smith here because he is our director and writer and his daughter stars alongside johnny depp's daughter in this film so um just for the listeners kevin smith writer director our stars of the film are two young girls Lily Rose Depp and Harley Quinn Smith. They play the Colleen's. Okay, we have Colleen C and Colleen M. Then we have um, Johnny Depp in this film as well. He is he reprises his role from the first film that these characters are from. Um, it is uh, what is his name? Guy Guy Lapeef Guy La whatever Guy Lapointe. Okay. And then you have, which I think this is hilarious. Because oh, that was Johnny Depp? That was Johnny Depp, yeah. Um, and then you have Adam Brody from uh, The O.C. and other films. But anyways, I love Adam Brody as an actor. I think he's great. Doesn't get enough work. But hey, that's his choice. He plays Ichabod, the drummer. So those are the stars. That's what I wrote down for now. Plus, plus, plus. Canadian Hitler Bugs. is Haley Joel Osment. Yes. What other film can you have Haley Joel Osment as Hitler? Canadian Hitler. I don't think you could in any other film. But he also was in, I believe, um, the first of the True North trilogy. Yoga Hosers is the second film. Tusk is the first in the True North trilogy. So give me a little bit more information here about this $5 million budget film that Kevin Smith gets to do whatever he wants with because this is, I mean... Why not? It's it's his choice. But tell me, what is wrong with him doing this film? What is wrong with him doing any film? Let's, Nothing. I'm going to be... Yeah. I don't know where he's getting all this money to make these movies. I I just okay. don't understand. I, I I liked Jane Silent Bob. Mm -hmm. I, I thought they were amusing enough. And then the novelty wore off. And... Okay, but before no, that, just... before that, you didn't like Chasing Amy? 
I did not like chasing. You didn't no. like clerks. We, we didn't even bring that up. Clerks, clerks is a unique film experience, which I think everybody needs to kind of go through. I, uh, I thought it was okay. That clerks was okay. Okay. To be frank, I did like clerks. I haven't seen clerks too. Also, I, that I did not like dogma, good. but like taste aside, I just feel like this, this is more of the same Kevin Smith that we've seen across the years. And, it feels like he hasn't really changed and so, he's just fucking so around. Let's stop right there for a sec because this is this is what I find really interesting in reading up more about Yoga Hosers and Tusk um, and where Kevin Smith is at in his life right now with what he's working on, okay? So the cool, the cool thing to me is up until Dogma, Dogma was the last film that Kevin Smith did that he felt he had lost like all of his way, right? He just... Wasn't happy writing, wasn't happy directing, wasn't happy doing anything. Right at right around Dogma. After okay. Dogma, he went to Canada. Started getting more in touch with Canadian workers, like actors and actresses and writers and whatnot. And it just from from what I've seen, he, he's kind of in in engulfed himself in Canada and, and he wants to do more things in Canada. This was around 2000, I think. And but he makes, he makes ahead. shit up about Canada in this movie. Like, yeah, he Canadians does. Don't say a boot. It's a, it's like a boat, but he's, he's embracing so what, forced. what people from America stereotypically assume Canadians do. That's something yeah. that I would assume. I, I mean, I've, I've talked to, to a good friend of ours from who's from Canada. You know her as well. Um, I, I, I don't yeah. like saying names because uh, I don't know if they want to be talked about or whatever. Having but anyways, lived in Canada. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Having yeah. lived in Canada, I make fun of her. I'm not saying she. I'm not saying kn knowing her. Uh, I, I'm not saying that they actually say a boot. Okay, like yeah, I, yeah, we, yeah. we get that. He's having fun with it. He's poking fun with it because so many people assume that that's what all Canadians are like. Like to me, this movie is him just and having all the sausages say "das gut." <laughs> is just having because they're because they're German das Nazi das brats. Um, but anyways, Kevin Smith's just having fun here, and, and that's Bratsy. I guess that's they're kind Bratsy. of my main my main point is after Dogma, he went on this kind of um, okay. finding himself trip, and when he landed in Canada he started making films that he wanted to go see in theaters and not what we wanted to go see in theaters. So yes, these movies are different. These movies aren't what everyone's looking for. Um, but at the end of the day, isn't that kind of what we want from filmmakers? We want them to feel the, the freedom to do whatever the hell they want. We don't want them to be in a box, uh, just making the next get out for everybody or the next, uh, I guess film that touches all the proper points for everyone out there with their feelings. Like to me, let's cut the crap and let's just have fun making films that everyone wants to go see um, because it's different. Not because it's all the same crap with the same cookie cutter pattern off my pedestal. I love my cookie cutter crap. How dare you? Sorry about that. It's fair. It's fair. What you you said is let him make films he wants to make and enjoy making them. But it's also fair for me to not like them. Oh, totally. So but I'm saying we like... can't we can't start this episode going, what the hell yeah. is Kevin Smith doing? You know what he's doing. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. you don't have to like what he's doing, but exactly. understand that but understand that Kevin Smith's gonna do whatever he wants to do. Same with acts. anyone else out there. Yeah, I mean acts of nepotism aside, acts of like this feels like an Adam Sandler film, but lower quality. Sure. So, we're going to break this movie down like we would do any other movie. Um, okay. I know you had fun watching this movie, but let's figure out why it was so much fun. So, uh, the way I like to break down movies usually is ask you a couple, but a couple of questions, right? Get get some feelings out of you, and then start talking about different scenes we liked and effects and stuff like that. So, in this movie. Who who's your favorite character? Who's my favorite character? Oh. Um none of them. I maybe the drummer. Okay, that's Adam Brody. No, 
I don't see very much of them. And when I do see them, I just feel sorry for them. Okay. But uh, yeah, I don't know. All right. I can sense it's going to be hard to get Clark to, to really open up about this movie. This is going to be I a mean, good episode. The, the, you have the Nazi doctor, right? Like, uh -huh. I, I didn't like the Brats guys. I didn't like the Bratwurst guys. I, I just, uh, I would have to say I like the drummer. Yeah. Oh, he, he has to be my favorite character. Dick of um, <laughs> but, but yeah, Dick of Boot. Yeah, I'm surprised it took you so long to think about Dick of Bud. Fucking love oh, that. That's yeah, that's so good. That is a good line. That is a good line. I will give this movie credit where credit is due. There is some good writing in here. There is some very good writing. I, I do have to, like, Kevin, the one thing Kevin Smith, I enjoy about Kevin Smith and all of his work is at least the dialogue in which he writes. He has a really good touch when it comes to uh, conversation and and meaningful con like fun conversation meaningful that like you can actually relate to versus just a movie that's so high above you and so you know the writing is so pure and good that no one would ever say it like that that's the kind of thing I think Kevin Smith really uh, is good at and this movie I think it shows that off here and there in spots for sure yeah I agree. Um, I liked Justin Long's yoga character. I thought that that was really funny. I, thought, I <laughs> love Justin Long, and I think he is. Unfortunately, he gets the hose. No pun intended with hoser. Um, he gets the hose because he. I don't know. I've only seen him in Kevin Smith films since, since uh, that last Die Hard movie, where a car flies into a helicopter. Like you just haven't seen him do any other bodies of work or he's not getting any bodies of work. I didn't look up his stuff. Uh, he, he, uh, yeah, okay. he was the, Hey, I'm a, I'm a Mac. He was the Mac back in the day, but now he's just kind of doing TV miniseries voices, a little bit of mostly TV. He was in the silent Jane, silent Bob reboot. Like otherwise nothing, man. Yeah. I think he's just kind of coasting right now. I guess. Right? I mean, he's 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 built up a body of work. He's, um, you know, now he's just living off his money, I guess. Yeah, that's what it looks like based on his IMDb. I just scrolled through the top in the past five years, what he's been doing. It's all TV movies, shorts, TV series, animated shows, um, or little short things with his buddies, you know, kind of having fun. So Brandon St. Randy in Jay and Silent Bob reboot, I would be, I would assume. I'm sure he wants, I'm sure he, he's fine with getting more work. And I think, I don't know. I don't know if that's the case. You might be right, but I would just say, yeah, I don't know why this guy's getting work in bigger things recently. Cause he's fucking fantastic. Yeah. I think he's just chilling. He's just having fun. I mean, at least that's what I hope. In my right. head, because he Fair is enough. he is a very good actor. I um, I yeah. like Justin Long a lot, and I loved Yogi Bear, his character in this movie. Um, yeah, one, one his thing little boo boos. Yeah, he's getting sued all the time. <laughs> the lawyers calling. I don't know why these lawyers are calling me. I don't understand. An animated film. You can't own the rights to nothing. An animated film isn't real. It's nothing. You can't own that. <laughs> like he's, I don't know. He's just ridiculous. But. Um, I uh, I know. I also go ahead. Go ahead. Well, no, I mean, I was gonna say I know here. why I know why he got brought into this film. It's because it's part of this trilogy. So, Tusk is the first film which stars Justin Long. He's the main character in that movie. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Yoga Hosers. Yep. And then Yoga Hosers is the sequel, or the second part of the trilogy. It's not an actual sequel. Um, and then there's a third film that's supposed to be coming out in the future. Um to round out the true North trilogy and um, Kevin Smith likes to just reuse his actors and actresses from his films yep. and plug them into different roles, whether they be lead side, super minor, whatever it is. And uh, I, I'm just glad that, you know, Justin Long got to come back and do something in this movie because he was stuck in a fucking walrus suit for a whole movie. And that's, <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested in seeing Tusk now. Uh, great. No, fantastic. Let's talk about the film. Babe, I love Let's... you. 
let's talk about we got these two main characters, um, both like vir virile fifteen and a half year old girls looking to to have boy times with puberties and whatnot, and their parents are like, okay, so their dad is basically he loves his daughter or one of the characters dad loves his daughter and her uh their boss the manager of the two main characters is played by natasha leone who i absolutely love and everything um she's kind of like the stepmom character who kind of shits on their parade mm -hmm. and they wanted to go to a party and she kind of like cock blocks them she's like no fuck you girls you're not going to this goddamn party and they're like you suck and so they go to Niagara Falls, the, the mom and the dad and the girls decide to have a party at the store. And that's when all sorts of crazy hijinks involving bratwurst Nazis begin. Yep. Curtis. You still there, Clark? I'm still here, Curtis. Okay, perfect. I thought I lost you. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think the way that they introduce us to the killer of the film is quite interesting. Because uh, yep. you, don't, you don't see the killer until, you know, was it about halfway through the movie, probably, I think would be my guess. About halfway. Yeah. And then we, don't, uh, we see we see the top like the hat of the killer. Mm -hmm. So we know the killer's size, and we know the killer is killing rectally as soon as we're introduced to him. Yeah, poor t poor t uh, toilet paper man. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, I don't really think this movie needs too much breaking down. It's not like some amazing story. The story's pretty. Um, generic. I, I think the acting was, to me, what I liked most about this movie. All the cameos were awesome. Um, seeing a bunch of actors that I like was really fun. Uh, and then some of the, you know, the jokes um, and the asinine Canadian speech that they tried to give was a lot of fun to see because it, you know, it's it's just not super realistic. It's, it's overly exaggerated. Um, and at the end of the day, <clears throat> you know, it's Kevin Smith putting his his daughter and her best friend, who's Johnny Depp's daughter, in a movie and making them stars. There was some side bit in a previous film that he did, Tusk, and then he just let them go run wild in this movie. So, um, I mean, I don't I don't really know if you want to break down story so much because it just doesn't really make a big difference, but. Not really, man. Like the side, there's like side side arcs and things like that. Like the Satanist boys who are gonna kill them. Mm -hmm. Like the whole means behind them having the party for the bratwursts to climb into butts and to show how they kill people, and then come out of their mouth and say "Wunderbar" in that intonation. And I don't know. I don't want to die that way, Curtis. <laughs> I don't think anyone would want to die that way. I don't want to die that way. The little bratwurst guys are just like climbing up people's butts and you could see them swimming through their back or their stomach. It's just, ugh. But listen, yeah. this isn't the real world. This is Canada. Okay? Oh, God. That is a line. That is a line. Yeah, it is. And then like snap the kid's neck and just pop right out and just say, wonderful. Yeah. Ugh. I... I don't know. Okay, so the worst part of this film to me are those sausage Nazis, the Bratzies. Yeah. Um, I mean, absolutely worst part of the movie to me. They're not even funny. They're actually really, really freaking annoying. Yeah. Um, but the best kill in the movie was one of those Nazi sausages when it crawls up. Uh, so the character in the movie's name is Gordon, but it's Tyler Posey um, who starred in the MTV show Teen Wolf which I loved. Um, and uh, so that's where I know him from. But so the sausage crawls through his ass up into his throat, breaks his neck and then comes out yeah. of him. I thought that was so cool. Like that was such a good yeah. part. Yeah. Agreed. Um, 
But the whole the shit that was disgusting. <laughs> the whole I, honestly, Satanist kids thing was weird, in my opinion. It was definitely um, a weird side arc. Yeah, that's not how a Satanist would act either. So I just don't. Okay. Well, you can tell he doesn't know what he's doing, right? Yeah. I mean, a he he completely messes up his own plan. <laughs> he goes to the you know the grocery or the the liquor store they work at and. He thinks he's going to take her in the back room and just kill her. He lays out his whole plan. Like, I mean, you can tell he's just a kid who doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Yeah. Doesn't matter. He's dead. Yeah. He's dead. Gordon's dead. There's a lot of deaths in this movie. Um, you know, and, and I have trouble. So after I watched this, I, I was like, okay, what's, you know, one of Clark's number one questions that he likes to ask? Because... I always try to think of um, different well, conversations. Is, that is. is this even horror? I uh, yeah. And I, I mean, always I've asked that question already. And I always like to look is... at IMDb to tell us. And IMDb doesn't classify it as horror, but a many, but many other, um, you know, movie collection systems do classify it as horror. So I I don't really know. I don't. After watching it, I still Horror don't know. Is in the Eye of the Believer. I mean, this is more like a Disney movie for teenagers. I mean, that's like a, that's yeah, kind of like a little, a little close. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's like with, a Disney Channel movie with a lot more. Yeah, with a lot more adult contact. Sure, for for sure. Very, very little. Very little. It's like adult content if you know where to look. Yeah, you're talking about like the fun Shrek jokes that go over the kid's head but hit the parents perfectly, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I could see that. I could, I could see that. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. I, I think it's funny you didn't realize that was Johnny Depp at first. No, I didn't even know. Uh, the whole mole thing is mole moving around everywhere. That was one of my least... The fact that they kept reusing that gag, gag made me so angry, and you know it did. I do, I do. <laughs> I wasn't. Hated I was gonna it. let you bring it up. I didn't want to bring up everything you hate it's, about this film. It's it's such a it's such a reused gag. It really is. I mean, Monty Python, Men in Tights, and just. And now you can add. And they overused it. They did it like ninety eight times. Like just get rid of them all. Just I don't know. So interesting. Um, interestingly enough i looked at tusk um and i looked at the character in tusk because i actually haven't um rewatched tusk in quite a while and i don't remember if goy le pont has he didn't have any moles if i remember right in that film and that's a much more serious tone movie even though it's about a man getting trapped in a walrus suit and whatever but it's it's a much more serious toned film than this one was um but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the mole, the mole bit to me makes me laugh just because I know what it's homaging to, right? I give it that, but at the same time, it was definitely overused. By the time they had three or four moles on his face at one time, I was like, okay, yeah. listen, like cut the shit. Like it's it's not yeah, even funny anymore. Exactly. Okay, so the in comedy, there's the rule of threes, which Kevin James does not follow. Well, that's Not that's the wrong guy, though. <laughs> Clark Gaff's twenty twenty. Kevin Smith. <laughs> I don't know. They're the same person to me. One did star in an Adam Sandler film, and one did not, though. To credit, they've you. both worked with Adam Sandler. So, Kevin Smith has. I think so. I mean, I guess I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, they probably they probably had lunch together at some point. You know, they ate bacon together once. Just, just throw me a bone. Throw me a bone here. All throw, right? throw me a freaking bone. Leave me here. alone. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. This guy. Can we talk about all the cameos in this film? Let's talk about Jason Mewes. How he uh, was a police officer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jason Mewes who shows up. He ends up uh, helping Guy <laughs> Lapointe, right? Get into the girls uh, when they're in the prison. Those who don't know, Jason Mewes is like kevin james best friend and he's just usually shoehorned in most of his stuff 
He's, I think, literally in everything in some way, shape, or form, except for the period of time when Jason Mewes was too stoned to do anything. I wouldn't say stoned. He was he was on some hardcore shit. Um, but yeah, don't yeah. do drugs, kid. So he's Jay from Jay and Silent Bob, to be more specific. Yep. Um, but he's also, like you said, he's been in a lot of work that uh, Kevin Smith has done. Um, in fact, when Kevin Smith played was it PUBG player unknowns battleground with anthony kong fan on twitch so there was like a celebrities learn how to play uh twitch event celebrity event kevin smith got to play with jason muse and anthony kong fan and there was another streamer who i don't follow so i don't remember his name but the four of them they all got together at a hockey rink um i think in buffalo and played uh PUBG together and uh, that that was pretty fun. Uh, watch that on YouTube, I believe. But anyways, oh, cool. Jason Mewes and Kevin Smith are in life, in real life, really good friends. And Kevin Smith pretty much puts him in in everything, which is awesome. Like if I had if I had that kind of power and money, and I was making films just for the hell of it, why wouldn't I put my best friends in it if they want to be? Like why not? That's that's not up for debate. Um, but. I really like Jason Mewes. I think he's a he's a lovable guy. You you listen to his story how he's come back from uh, from his addiction. Mm -hmm. I I mean, I think anyone could look at him and be like, listen, he's back on his feet. He seems to got he seems to have his head on his shoulders again, and that's good. That's the most important part about whatever's going on in Jason Mewes' life. He's perfect for movies like this. Movies that shouldn't be taken seriously. Agreed. We also get the likes of Stan Lee popping in and giving a nice little cameo. That was cool. Um, you what, also was get... the, what was the joke with him? Like he's trying to give somebody advice or... No, he's the police sergeant who answers the call when the girls call. And he's not taking him seriously. And then they basically yell at him. And he's like, damn yoga hosers. Which also I thought he was giving them advice and they're like, fuck off. And... Over the no, nah, he's. I mean, he was the police chief when they call. Right. I, I don't remember him giving a lot of advice. I mean, he I might have tried a security guard or something. But we get Stanley, so we have Jason yeah. Muse, Stanley, um, Johnny Depp's not really a cameo. He's an actual character, so I won't count him in this. But you get Kevin Conroy, who I thought was actually really cool to see in this film. You mean Batman? Yes. So he's the guy buying a pack of smokes, for those of you who may not have recognized him. But he is the voice of Batman in animated films. And in the convenience store, his son's name is Robin, which I thought was just them being, hey, in your face, this is who it fucking is. Here you go. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so we get, who was the other one? I thought we had another fun cameo. Uh, I guess Haley Joel Osment's kind of a cameo because he's not really in the film for much, which is kind of no, sad. No, he's just fat. He's just a chubby little Hitler. And he's I want to say little Canadian Hitler. I want to say he's also in Tusk. He is. Yeah, Haley Joel. He's Teddy Craft. Yeah, I think his role in Tusk is much bigger. Like I said, what Kevin Smith likes to do is he likes to take certain people, move them into a movie, make them characters. Take the small characters, move them into another movie, make them main characters. Take the main characters from the previous movie, move them into this movie, and make them small characters. And he likes to just kind of rinse and repeat and do that kind of stuff. Um, as if you, I mean, if you look at Tusk uh, actors list compared to uh, Yoga Hosers actor list, you'll Jay see and Silent Bob in every single movie. Yep, Clerks. Clerks. Um, because that's where you know, Jay and Silent Bob started. Then you go into Mall Rats. Yep, Chasing Amy. Um, borrows was it Matt Damon's character um, from the other like it's just it's it's this awesome to me it's really cool to see because these characters just get to keep living on through Kevin Smith's work it's a lot of fun a beautiful mind no I'm just joking with you I was gonna say that one I'm not backing up um my last two points or my last two notes that I wrote down that I thought were really really cool um, one was Principal Invincible. I thought she was a really fun character. Um, so when the girls go to com uh, complain to her, to the principal about... I wish there was more of her. Yes, I agree. 
uh, about losing their phones, she drops one of the best lines on them um, that like every every young person in the world <laughs> needs to hear when they're complaining about something, which is basically, she's like, you see what I did there? I compared your privileged lives to slavery and I'm black. And she's like trying to like help them understand like you without your phone for six periods of school is nothing. Stop complaining about it and move on. And I just think that that was, that's really fun. Uh, really good writing. And then the other, yeah, you like that. the other one that I liked uh, was the homage to clerks. So when, the two Colleen's are having issues at the liquor store. Uh, Colleen, I think it's Colleen M decides to yell, uh, I'm not even supposed to be here today, which is an homage to clerks. And I thought that that was great. Um, but yeah, that that's all I got. I, I like this movie. I think it's a lot of fun, but I want to hear out of a, you know, on a scale of zero to 10, what does Clark give this film? I don't want to be seen in a room with this this film. Um, it's it's kind of like that embarrassing brother who's you know kind of he, he hasn't really taken care of himself. He hasn't really he's let himself go. He's given up on life and he's just super depressed all the time. That's what this film is to me. It's, okay. I just don't have time for for a psychic vampire like that, Curtis. You know what I I. I hear you, and <laughs> I just I I only have one thing to say to you, okay? Sorry about that. Sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. Eh? No, it's, it's it's all right. It's all right. It's a uh... wonderful. We we are going to be watching Tusk. Um, oh no, I'm, gonna, I'm in. Yeah, I have it. I think I already have it on my list. If not, uh, but I don't know when we'll watch it. I don't want to give the listeners a false you know date like oh yeah we're gonna watch it soon i mean it's april the show's not going anywhere anytime soon from what well, i can it's tell so for our viewers yeah sorry we're recording in april you'll be listening to us in may um and yeah so anyways like tusk is on the list we're definitely gonna be listening or watching tusk so you guys can hear our opinion on that one but from what i remember it's the more serious toned film uh out of these two um and who knows maybe by the time we watch tusk we'll have the third part of this series and we'll be able to kind of wrap it all up together and put it out there for you. Wonderful, wonderful yeah. listeners. That just sounds wunderbar. Wunderbar. That was Kevin well, Smith, that... by the way, which also annoys the shit out of me. He, he always, is he was the brats. Movies, no, but uh... he's the brat brats, Nazis or Bratsies or whatever the hell they're called. Like, oh, I just wanted to shake is those it... damn things. They're so annoying. Sorry. They're, they're just ah, you're too annoying. Can't um, can't handle them. I'm sorry that, you know, sorry everyone disappoints you all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you accept us for who we are. God dang it. <laughs> you're beautiful. You're a beautiful human being. You know what? Um, With that, we're going to move into there are no fun facts in trivia. Because there, there are no fun facts in trivia. I, I think we should talk about the, you the big Jason-looking machine, though. Oh, the goalie golem. Jump inside, yes. Okay. I think we need to discuss that. And I really, because this guy was made to look like Jason. He looked great. And yeah. I want to hear your opinion on that. I mean, honestly, didn't give two shits about the end of this movie. The creature that the goalie golem or whatever didn't really do much for me. It was just a bunch of Bratzies inside of it, apparently. I just don't understand that. Um. I and as for it looking like Jason, like it didn't to me, it wasn't very, it wasn't very good. But I don't know. I don't know if you're just trying to harass me now or what. No, a little bit of column <laughs> A, a little bit of column B. It was meet Jason. Like they definitely tried to make it look scary. I mean, I'll give them that. They tried. <laughs> they, well, they took people's corpses, and the only reason this the mad scientist like kidnapped the girls was because. He wanted them to to take Instagram photo for him because he wasn't good at that sort of thing. Yeah, but they didn't have their phones. Yeah, because the police didn't give him back. Yeah. You know, that guy could have stopped all this from happening if he didn't try to collect corpses. 
I'm just saying, look, viewers at home, if you ever feel the need to collect corpses, don't. Just don't. There's no. Okay. I should get a medal for that. Saving kids' lives. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. Uh, I don't. There's nothing to be sorry about. There's this. Uh, this whole. Uh, I don't know. This whole movie left me. I don't know how to feel. It, it, it's like. It's like watching a kid play with toys. Um, which is what Kevin Smith did. And now that from what, your perspective, Curtis, now that I'm just kind of thinking about it, I'm like, man, this was a fun, it was pretty fun. I mean, it, it's definitely a movie I could watch at a party, goofing around drinking or whatever. If I wanted to put something just completely ludicrous on, it's not a bad movie. I think there's enough in there that you could laugh at. And the amount of cameos that are in there would surprise most people who are watching the movie. They'd be like, what? Johnny Depp's in this? You know? Or, mm -hmm. holy shit, is that... That's Haley Joel Osment? He's Canadian Hitler? Like, those kinds of things to me make this movie a lot more fun than it really is deep down in the core of what Kevin Smith made. I think he's just, you know, he's lucky enough to be, you know, a star and can can pull off something like that and make it happen. I don't I don't think there's many other people who could. Um, He's a hero. I wouldn't go that far. Um, no. But some some the only bits of fun fact I guess I think I messaged you yesterday saying that it sounded like The Shining, um, the Shining music at one point in the film, and he does he does actually use uh, the same score from The Shining in mm. this film. He also uses a uh, music cue from Halloween from 1978, the original John Carpenter score um, in the movie. And uh, yeah, the opening moments from The Shining from 1980. He also used that in Clerks 2, which I didn't actually realize. Um, but yeah, pretty much everything else in here is just like goofy stuff about his podcast, which I really don't want to promote on ours because I don't think he needs help. Um, being promoted. I'll promote him. What's what's his name? Oh, never mind. Poop, poopy Speaking man. Speaking of, I need to watch Clerks too. I think you do. I think it's a really good film. I think I do. I think it's a great uh, sequel to the original. Um, uh, with with updated jokes to its time, I guess. I went and saw it in theaters, so I was probably like a freshman in high school. I think whenever Clerks 2 came out. I could double check that. But what have you been up to lately? What do you watched, read, or done lately? Um, so I watched the uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboot. And what'd you think of that? It was exactly it was it was pretty self aware. I'll give Kevin Smith that. Okay. Um another movie with Harley Quinzel. Mm -hmm. as one of the main characters and it was okay it was a good message of hey guys i moved on good yeah well uh the family and i just watched trolls 2 mm -hmm. um i'd have to say it's an okay movie um Trolls is Trolls was much better in my opinion when it comes to like music choices, um, storyline, stuff like that. I just feel like Trolls Two was a huge ripoff from a lot of other animated films that came out around the same time, uh, or or I would say before it, um, that they just kind of borrowed from. Whether it was an animated film or even a live action film, um, but yeah, I, I mean it's it's a decent movie if you got kids, check it out. If you're an adult, don't. Don't waste your time. It's it's not not worth it. The songs aren't as good. The story is kind of whack, and um, they just borrow from a bunch of other people, which is kind of my problem right now with movies. Is I just want you know unique new stuff. I don't want the same rinsed and repeated things. Yeah. You know what I think we need more of that we haven't had in a long. 
What do you think? Space bounty hunter movies. Okay. We need like the Mandalorian. We need more of that. But Nothing in movie but format. the Mandalorian all the time. Every day. No, I I don't know, man. I think there's there's an inundation of media out there right now to the point where I've consumed so much that at this point it's kind of like do I really need to consume more of it? Maybe I'll go outside and smell a flower and read a book. A lot of that going on right now. Yeah. A lot of free time at home. Yeah. <laughs> Well, on that fun, positive, and motivating moment, let's plug our social media. So if you don't know, we're on Twitter and Instagram at the number two guys horror pod. Uh, come hang out with us. Talk with us on our social medias. Um, you can also reach out to us via email with any tips, suggestions, or anything like that. It's two guys and some horror at gmail.com. The word two, not the number so fully written out and yeah i mean we we're having a lot of fun we're um you know we got quite a few movies still in the can that we need to get done um yeah we we hope you guys are just having a lot of fun hanging out with us and and listening to what we got we we're gonna have um another recurring guest in a couple of episodes uh after really? this one yes really so, is that is that my buddy so mimic is coming out he's gonna he's gonna really? do an episode with us and uh mimic it's my favorite horror film for those of you what following movie? us for those for those of you following us on social media we've done some top slasher flicks we've done some top where flicks i'm getting ready to release my top 10 horror movies this is april 14th it'll probably be coming out tomorrow so look for that and it's the number one horror film on that list is my uh, top horror film. It's also the episode that we'll be doing with Mimic. So look for that. It's coming out uh, two weeks after this episode. And uh, and yeah, anything else you want to plug, Clark? I I would love to to plug my love for for Jessica. Um, I just want to let you know. Last night, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, I got nothing, man. I Thank you all for listening to us. We really appreciate you. Heck yeah. We'll catch you guys next week.